Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey there, Rulers. DMO73 here. Before we jump into it, just want to let you know that Odyssey Games is now taking pre-orders on Epic of the Dragon Lord, the first set of Saga Cluster. There is a link down below in the description to take you right to it. And if you use the code ALUMNI, you get free shipping on all orders of two boxes or more. So if you haven't had a chance to pick it up yet, go ahead and check it out down below and get yourself pre-ordered. It'll be arriving to you on release day. So super excited to be able to help them with that. So today we have a nice feature match between uh, Paul Reisman playing a Faria Beats deck designed by Steven Holscheiser of the Rogues Guild, and I am playing an Infinite Turns Magna List by request as designed by the one and only Lars, uh, Lars G, uh, giving us this very, very um, interesting take on trying to take Infinite Turns. Uh, you can do it with Valentina or Magna, we decided to play the Magna variant. So let's jump right in. First turn here on the draw, we're going to play an immediate Grand Cross Reincarnation. We have to reveal the stranger. We have Sprout, primarily doing it to force him to sacrifice an entity and get another Regalia to our hand. We do not want that road to stick on the field. That card puts in so much value for the Faria J Ruler Beats deck. The fact that Faria on a Regalia enter can kill Arrested Resonator and that her um, road makes all of my Resonators come into play Rested means that card puts in a lot of a lot of work to clear the way we start to grab the lover's lock instead we go you know what actually let's go ahead and grab another genesis here to replace the one we just used um and be able to set up for some other place here so we're going to also go ahead and pay uh use the genesis immediately for a dark alice smile to look at that stranger that he grabbed we see it is the um guy who does a thousand to the board and then um a thousand to face ultimately choosing to take the regalia instead of the um instead of the stranger seeing that he doesn't have a grand cross in hand uh and we don't want to let him set up for a nice two turn uh turn to regalia which feels great for us having to kind of force him to rely on those um awakening of the winged lords before he can potentially get into anything we do happen to have a second Regalia here. We have the Caduceus, which is nice. This deck plays three Regalia, a total of Genesis, uh, one Caduceus, and one Lover's Lock, because if you have all three of those together, um, you can play Final Stance off of just your Regalia, which is very nice. So we're going to see Paul go ahead and try to use that um, Awakening of the Winged Lord during his turn. He does hit a... Uh, Rings of the Archangel and uses the mode to go ahead and pop that Yggdrasil, but the Yggdrasil's kind of done its work right here, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and we're going to go, we're not, I'm not too concerned about that. Using the, um, does get to use the uh, Wings of the Archangel to play that second Awakening immediately and does see the Regalia off the top of that one. So just in the span of one recovery, suddenly uh, Paul having two instant speed uh, Regalia ready to go. Um, not sure if he's going to do judgment for free here um it is kind of early and when we're doing some test hands it's kind of lackluster against this matchup for him to flip early because then it's pretty vulnerable and he wants to be putting pressure but wants to be calling stone um and he also wants those strangers in hand so it does decide to go ahead and just call the stone there after we're getting a stranger and drawing a card down comes the healing gimmick very very great card to keep himself alive and does have a second road of the sacred queen um road to the sacred queen so now all my guys come into play tapped which is really really not great it also gets him a stranger which provides so much value in a deck that utilizes grand cross so frequently um there's some very mean enter effects that you can use with grand cross and being able to get them quickly to your hand um is pretty nuts especially since grand cross can be a sword art or a mage art Paul having a Yggdrasil of his own to be able to grab an Excalibur. This is primarily so that he can, um, you know, turn on zero cost judgment if he wants to. Uh, in response to the cast, though, before he starts really digging, we're going to go ahead and cast Magic Stance. This is primarily to see if we could maybe draw into a Defense Stance. Ultimately, they're not seeing it, so he is going to get that second Regalia, choosing to grab an Awakening of the Winged Lord. Um, we're going to go ahead and do 
at end of turn another grand cross reincarnation here modes to i believe get another uh regalia and force him to sacrifice one or an entity he controls so he can sacrifice the yggdrasil there and at that point in time we get lover's lock so now we're set up to be able to have a lot of will very very early problem really at this point in time is if i do want to play any kind of resonator i'm kind of in a weird spot because like i said there's that road ultimately though we decide our hand is a little bit wonky we need something a little bit better we're going to go ahead and play amon pay some life and draw some cards here paying 14 to draw a couple of cards And passing the turn there, knowing we didn't put any plus one, plus one counters on the AMO, knowing full well that it's probably going to get killed here. Um, before the recovery, Paul's going to use Healing Gimmick here. Go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to gain that thousand life. Healing Gimmick's just going to sit there anyway. Let's draw a little bit and see what we can make use of sitting on this five will that I have before recovery. Does see that Sacred Wave Blade and can awaken it to get that AMO just off the board completely, RFG it, and even get another stranger to hand. Does have that oh, um, Wings of the Archangel if he wants to try to Judgment this turn. Ultimately decides to just call another stone, get the most value out of it as possible. And then just chooses to pass. So we draw for turn before recovery. Gonna go ahead and flash in the lover's lock. So now we're at a total of 10 will after we call stone here. And the fact that lover's lock and caduceus and um, lover's lock and caduceus and uh, genesis can all pay for strangers, it also is kind of good for that. But we are, we are gonna go ahead and just flash in um, final stance here post recovery. And now in response to the trigger from magic stance to put a uh, magic stance to grave we're going to use the uh, grand cross reincarnation with the modes to force him to banish an entity and trigger the answer effect of our revealed stranger the revealed stranger is undyne so undyne here is going to get to then bounce three and a uh, non-resonator entities uh back to the hand and so undyne here is going to bounce magic stance final stance and then uh, one of his regalia back to his hand. And this is the kind of initial start of infinite turns. So the idea is here now we, we know for a fact we're going to be able to take another turn after this. So we're just going to go ahead and say, you know what, pass. We go into the second turn before recovery we'll flash in this magic stance back onto the field draw a couple more cards for some protection maybe set up for like having a, a defense stance or something like that we can get a little bit more value out of it now that we have one more stone to play around with and we were able to cast magic stance before the recovery so now we're going to go ahead and use those three regalia down comes the final stance yet again. And then once again in response to the trigger. So this is the risky part, right? We don't know his hand, but we know that there's a possibility. He's got a lot of strangers in hand. We know there's a possibility that there might be some kind of removal for the Undyne, but we are going to go ahead and flash in the Undyne naturally in response to that trigger to then have Undyne bounce his other regalia, our magic stance, and our final stance back to our hand again, allowing us another turn after this one. 
So this is two turns, so now we're on turn three in a row uh, after this one takes place. Thankfully, like I said, we have a little bit of extra will here. Um, we have one that we can make use of, so we'll go ahead and play this Guinevere, which is very, very nice to be able to help us potentially draw. There's one more piece of the combo at this point that we're, that we're missing, um, and we want to be able to get to it. So um, Guinevere will definitely help with that. So at that point in time, we know that Paul is out of will. He's Regalia are off board. Um, he didn't have anything to stop the Undine, at least not comfortably, um, or something that felt any kind of comfort. He know we know he has floating extra will here. Um, he's too blue from his uh, Regalia, so we'll have to see exactly what he decides to do. He does know that I have magic stance in hand, which makes what he's about to do here a little bit awkward. We're gonna go ahead and see a flash in of double twin swords. Um, He'll flash in one to try to put uh, Guinevere back on top and then put, or, sorry, put Undine back on top and then put Guinevere back on top of it. This does get him a couple bodies for sure, um, but he knows that I'm going to be taking the next turn. So, and he also knows that I have Magic Stance. So I get to draw for turn, which draws me Gwyn, Magic Stance during the upkeep, which gets me Undine. So I'm immediately right back to where I needed to be. So draw, this is turn three in a row for the Magna deck. Take another couple of draws. And then at that point, I believe we draw the last combo piece that we need to be able to set up for the infinite, which you'll see here in a moment. Down comes final stance. Down comes Undine, targeting the two of those, goes back to my hands. And then we have a little bit of extra will, so we're gonna go ahead and play this Azazel. Um, and then we'll go ahead and play the Gwyn as well. This is to kind of get some cards out of our hand. At this point in time, we feel pretty confident that he's not going to have anything to answer the Undyne. So, and we're getting to a point where the extra will, we don't really need to worry about doing it before the main phase. Um, choosing to not uh, swing, even though the fact that all of our resonators have swiftness here. Um, recovering everything here. Call stone. Swinging in with... Far, um, Undine here, we see the Intimidation come down to prevent all damage that would be dealt by Resonators for the turn. So it keeps himself alive, but once again, because we're taking infinite turns, it also just means that future turns he doesn't have that available. But again, it wouldn't really matter. Down comes the Magic Stands, draws me a couple cards, and then at that point in time, we have everything we need for the infinite because we find the Schrodinger. So final stance here, and then in response to the final stance trigger, we use Schrodinger to flicker Undine. Undine then flickers and then gets to bounce Schrodinger, Magic Stance, and um, Final Stance back to our hand. And so this is now the infinite. There's at this point nothing that Paul, unless Paul can remove the Undine or cancel anything that I'm gonna ca cancel the three uh, cards, I get to take infinite turns with the Undine um, for lethal. So Paul here kind of being a good sport, popping out his phone, checking some stuff up because he's like, knowing what's going on and he wants to watch me walk through it here um so i'll, I'll i get to explain it here that this game is officially over at this point paul acknowledges that there's nothing in his hand that he can use to be able to stop me from from doing the loop there's nothing in his hand that can stop me from doing any kind eventually doing enough damage to him um and so what we're going to do here in just a moment is i'm going to clear some stuff out of the way and kind of walk you through the infinite combo just as an example before we move into game two. Does have that second Intimidate, um, just to stop one more turn of damage. The infinite part of the combo comes from the fact that Schrodinger is an addition. Um, we have the final stance into Schrodinger, bring these back to my hand, uh, and just kind of keep doing that infinitely until the game is over. Just for fun, we're gonna go ahead and do, we have all this extra will, we're gonna go ahead and use Dark Alice to smile. Paul shows me that his hand is for Regalia and Hino, so nothing instant speed in there. He's never gonna draw another card again. We know for a fact that the game is over, I don't have to do anything other than just swing with Undine. 
So here's the walking through the combo. You play your first stance. Once you have all the pieces, essentially you need a stance of some kind, final stance, Schrodinger, and Undine. Um, the first set of the combo is doing what I did before, of doing magic stance to flicker the final stance with Undine to put him back in your hand. Once that happens and you have Schrodinger, you can then respond to the trigger of the final stance to flash in Schrodinger, flicker the Undine and put Schrodinger, final stance, and magic stance back in your hand, do it infinite times, and then you win the game. So that is game one, Paul being a great sport, and with that we move on to game two. So came two here, Paul hoping to put enough pressure on, or at least prevent me from having enough draw power to see those combo pieces. And we'll see if it pays off. Does have that first turn road, which is once again, an excellent position for his deck to be in. We are gonna go ahead and see that first turn road come down. Gets him a stranger. Genesis into Dark Alice's Smile. We're going to go ahead and rip the Hino out of his hand. We have a second Dark Alice's Smile, and at that point in time, we're going to rip the Wings of the Archangel out of his hand. So you know what? We don't want you to have a turn to Regalia comfortably. We're going to have to make you like deal with the variants of it or just not get it, um, and we that's what we don't want. Ultimately, though, top decks the Excalibur, so it gets all that value anyway. It gets a Stranger, draws a card, um, it might have been, you know, the argument might have existed that because he only gets one trigger off of the, um, because he only gets one trigger off of the Wings of the Archangel, that taking the Grand Cross would have been better, um, because, but then again, if he plays the Archangel and has Awakening, he just, like, gets to double ramp and potentially gets two Regalia in one turn, which is really not what we want him to be able to do, so... No, nothing on the, my turn to go ahead and pass back to Paul see a Percival the Charmed Knight, look for the top five cards of your deck, uh, top, uh, get a Regalia or a Chant, um, which is great because, you know, it's a Chant, Grand Cross, uh, and this deck makes a really, really huge use of Grand Cross Reincarnation. During the end of his turn, we're going to go ahead and do Magic Stance just to draw a couple more cards, moves to recovery. Once again, the road becomes a significant problem because we know he has Awakening of the Winged Lord, which digs him into Regalia. We know that he just dug five. We know he's got a stranger in hand. We And so we're concerned about Grand Cross Reincarnation. He can just force us to sacrifice whatever we play. Um, we want to kind of play defensively, but also not. Like, yes, the defense stance is a cancel, but we also have to, you know, wary what are we canceling? A lot of these things are going to be two will for two will. Um, and a lot of the Faria deck does have instant speed, so he can do a lot of stuff during his recovery phase. So while not being a control deck in this position that he has cancels, he does get to kind of sit there and say, hey, do you want to do something? I'll have something in response. Um, or if you don't, cool, I'll just gate advantage off it. It's one of the benefits of Wings of the Archangel so significantly. Puts in the Yggdrasil. We are going to go ahead and flash in that one of Blue Wizard to try to stop it. Paul, though, having a um, Grand Cross reincarnation to force me to sacrifice. I think he actually chooses to grab a Regalia here um, and then use Blue Wizard's Enter effect without having to put it back, uh, without having to play the Blue Wizard itself to stop my blue wizard. So this is a pretty big play for Paul. Um, sure, it costs him three, but he's being efficient with his regalia. Um, we are gonna try to grand cross him back um, just to kind of force him to sacrifice an entity uh, in response and then get a regalia of our own. This feels wrong. Uh, I don't think this is a proper play. Um, there really was no reason, in fact, especially since the fact that he has just a generic Percival that he can sacrifice, other than just to keep up with him will-wise. Um, Paul gets to get two Regalia here, so he can get that Genesis, um, and then he can get that Wings of the Archangel. He still gets to keep that Yggdrasil for the following turn. And now my Blue Wizard is in play tapped, which is really not great. The 
Safari Beats deck runs a single copy of Genesis because we have so many ways to bring them to hand with the Grand Crosses. So there's kind of no reason to not at least play one. Comes in and play tapped, but you don't really care. Um, and, you know, sometimes you really just want to have a different mode for the Grand Cross that's more advantageous than what's going on in the situation. Uh, and so you can benefit by getting yourself that extra will for later. Before recovery here, we're going to go ahead and flash in the Lover's Lock. Playing it to Gusa, the competent investigator. This is primarily to help us try to dig a little bit. Paul saying, you know what, if you're feeling like your hand is that bad, we're going to go ahead and force you to keep it there. So no, we're going to use the blue wizard here. In response, we're going to use a grand cross with the mode to bring a stranger back to our hand and force him to sacrifice an entity. Sacrificing the Yggdrasil, of course. He's not going to sacrifice those regalia. And then we're going to flash in blue wizard in response to his blue wizard. Uh, so we're just going to do what to him what he did to us so that Tegusa gets to happen. I get to look at those top three, grab a card. So now that that's all figured out, we can go ahead and follow up with another Genesis and get us into an Amon. Like I said, our hand in this situation has not been good. Um, so we're recognizing the fact that that Amon is probably going to die. We're hoping that he can draw us into something good, uh, especially since what we just saw off the Togusa was pretty okay. So we're going to go ahead and spend uh, uh, 2100 life to uh, draw three cards. He is a 21-21, but the problem is we know that he's going to die immediately just by Paul playing a Regalia. So it's not a big deal, but we're at least going to give it a shot. Before recovery, we're going to go ahead and see that Awakening of the Winged Lord. We say, you know what? No. We're not going to let that stand. We're going to try and go for the magic stance to stop it and just punish that there. Move to a recovery. Paul's like, how many stones do you have up? You have only one? Okay, great. Now uh, we can get the most advantage advantageous here um, by using... Pretty much just his three regalia, his two regalia, or just Genesis and um, Excalibur here to use Awakening of the Sacred Queen. So you just go ahead and grab a light regalia so he can go grab another Excalibur, put it into play, get his Faria flipped, get a stranger, um, and put us into a position of just pretty much winning the game outright. He gets to kill a resonator that's tapped and then um, judgment for zero. And he's thinned his. So, the thing that this deck does really well is it thins its stranger deck really crazy so that it's probably going to flip into something really, really nice off of the Faria flip. In this case, hitting a Loki. And Loki's going to say, all other Resonators are immediately removed from the game. So completely clears my board, gets rid of the Blue Wizard, he doesn't care, represents 1,200 damage on board, Faria is currently representing a 14-14 Flyer on board, and anything I put into play comes into play tapped. It's not a very good situation for the Magna deck to be in at all. Um, even, even flipping Magna doesn't feel good here because I only have two regalia. Now, if I had the third regalia and could do flip into judgment, that would feel pretty good. Um, the problem is I just, I don't have that. So we're gonna go ahead and see magic stance, see if that draws us into anything. Realizing it doesn't, we scoop it up and we go into game three.
first turn Yggdrasil, not having a first turn road here, which feels pretty good. Choosing to pass. We're going to go ahead and magic stance the regalia that he searched for with the Yggdrasil, but he is at least going to get to still play the road. We say, you know what? That's fine. We stole the regalia from you. You can have a road. Playing a Genesis and our own Yggdrasil. The problem here is that road makes our Yggdrasil significantly worse because it comes into play tapped. So it's immediately um, vulnerable to a Regalia trigger of his own or a Resonator swinging into it. I mean, thankfully, right now, Paul only has a Yggdrasil, so it's not a big deal. Um, but it is still something to be like, yikes, um, this guy has to survive a full turn before I can make use of it. Normally, this would be a situation, especially playing for black, that we would use Yggdrasil to grab Lover's Lock. And then during Paul's turn, be able to flash in Lover's Lock using the Yggdrasil. But because of Road, that puts a big damper on that plan. Says, you know what? We're going to go ahead and go for it. We're going to do Awakening of the Sacred Queen. We need a Regalia right now, especially to shoot that Yggdrasil. Um, we're going to go ahead and do Awakening of the Sacred Queen, get a Regalia, and put that into play. In response to the Enter trigger, uh, or the Yggdrasil or sorry, the Faria trigger to kill my stuff. We're going to go ahead and do Grand Cross Reincarnation here. Force him to sacrifice an entity. Again, this is a little bit suboptimal play because he has the Yggdrasil. Like, he just got an Excalibur. He's probably not going to sacrifice Road. He's probably not going to sacrifice the Excalibur. Um, it will leave him with only two will, but again, that was all the will he was going to have anyway. Um, the only time this would be particularly good would be if I had a second Grand Cross immediately available, but it does help us go get another Regalia so we can go get Caduceus. Uh, we learned from last time we need to try to get Regalia online as fast as possible to be able to keep up with what Paul can do, um, and so that is what we are trying to do here. Seeing a bad stone there, we definitely wanted that to be something other than what it was. Only having one source that's anything other than black green. The deck runs two black silences and we hit both of them so early. Have you ever wondered what it's like to have Faria be a burn deck? Because you're about to find out. Uh, Grand Cross Reincarnation with Hino Kanasuchi um, means that he gets to burn my entire board for 10 and me the player for 10. So suddenly, just, just like that, during the upkeep in a matchup that I'm supposed to be being beaten down by a J Ruler, uh, I take 10 damage. I take a quarter of my life in the upkeep from that deck. For, that's a deck that's green-white. Um, and he can also use Grand Cross to then go get another Regalia. So he can just go get uh, Awakening... Uh, Wings of the Archangel right there. And Hino just stays in his hand. So any other copy of uh, Grand Cross that he's able to find, essentially now until I can get it discarded, becomes burn opponent for 10. That uh, becomes a burn 10 burn spell. Down comes that healing gimmick, followed right after by a Percival here. Pretty much trying to drink to Grand Cross Reincarnation. You see he does see another one of those right off the top. So already not looking great for the Magna deck. We're going to see that Awakening of the Winged Lord. In or sorry, the, the Archangel. In response to that, we're going to go ahead and flash in Magic Stance to hopefully draw into a Defense Stance to cancel it, but no such luck. So down comes the uh, Wings, and he gets to go get another Stranger back to his hand. Strangers this deck is running is Twin Swords, Blue Wizard, Hinokanasuchi, Loki, and um, the uh, healing gimmick. 
So all very good. <laughs> all very good specifically in this specifically in this matchup. Paul allowing me to do some proper um, will distribution there for the sake of the recording so that I can still flash in Lover's Lock during the recovery. Finally seeing another source there. We have that Dark Alice's smile. We say, no, you're not allowed to have another. He you're not allowed to have Hino in hand. <laughs> uh, we want to get that, get rid of it now. Um, Paul kind of checking his graveyard, seeing what he wants to do here. Says, uh, I'll banish healing gimmick right now, draw another card, see if we can get into something. And says, okay, cool. Well, you're about to get rid of my Hino Kanasushi. Let's get the most value out of it possible. Let's use Grand Cross, force you to sacrifice an entity. Um, and then uh, do that. But thankfully, we use uh, Mermaid Princess to draw a card, and we draw into Magic st or Defense Stand. So we're able to cancel the Grand Cross, which is great. And then at that point in time, we're going to say, no, Hino is out of here. We got that out of there. That's what we wanted. Um, I'm not going to have to worry about taking that burn damage now. It taps me out, which is really, really unfortunate for the most part like it leaves me with two open will but we've already put a defense stance on board at this point um and again any resonator i put into play comes in rested we just saw his hand and know he has ways to get regalia to hand plus removal um once again paul being very very kind and letting me kind of rearrange how we were casting those things uh so that we can play as most efficiently for the sake of the channel down comes caduceus here not gonna do much with red white um you know there's no green uh but still sets us up for being able to do the final stand stuff which is important paul choosing to call another stone a little bit far i think now would probably have been a bit good time to go ahead and try to go for the flip um just to put pressure on uh does decide to play another road i mean even with out calling stone he would have had will to be able to do road plus Awakening of the Winged Lord um, without calling stone to still possibly hit a Regalia. You see he has a Regalia in hand, so he could do road plus Regalia and still have one five will um, because of the uh, Regalia themselves. Um, putting the Magna deck on a clock at this point I think probably would have been great, um, but ultimately does decide to just kind of play a little bit more patient Put it on the back put me on the back foot tell me you know i gotta get through this wall of will um you already kind of have been showing me he uh, the magna deck has been showing it that it's running him a little slow um so not really doing much there um so just call stone pass from the magna deck Paul kind of eyeing the, the board state, eyeing what's in his hand, eyeing what his resources are, uh, especially now having seen that Genesis coming into play tapped this turn, but will be usable next turn. He's now kind of starting to eye that J-Ruler uh, side of Faria a little bit more. Um, I believe he also has an aura of the Sacred Queen to give himself barrier, which feels very, very good. Um, and at this point in time, we'll be free with a Judgment at Faria. Choosing to play the Excalibur here. Um... In response to the cast, we're going to go ahead and do Magic Stance. This is once again to say, hopefully we can Magic Stance into Defense Stance. Um, but we do not see it. So it's going to get him that free Judgment, free Stranger. Um, or potentially draw, choose to draw a card. Do just draw a card, get a Stranger, or Judgment for free. It's based on what Strangers he knows are still left in the deck um, to be able to try to go for it. Six left at this point. He's going to go down to five off the flip. Have four left after the flip. And just like that, Hino Kanasuchi just comes into play. Uh, burning me for 10, taking me down to, attempting to take me down to 18. Um, paying for things the proper way this time. 
Going to have double blue and then white. Grand Cross Reincarnation. Force him to sacrifice an entity. Uh, or potentially bring a stranger back to hand. And use Blue Wizard here to try to stop the Hino from burning me for 10. This is probably the reason why Paul waited until he had a second road. Because you can sacrifice one road here and still have the road defense up. It's just kind of free benefit here. Um, mitigates the uh, thing from the Grand Cross. I do take not 10, which is great, um, but still now Hinosuchi is a 2020 body that is also being backed up by the Faria itself. Um, and Paul has a lot of will to be able to make use of on my turn. Even a twin swords coming down here, um, choosing to put his own Percival back on top of his deck, which makes sense because it can draw him into another uh, Grand Cross reincarnation. With all this extra will we have, we're saying, you know what? Let's will of the wisp. Let's try to draw into some other good cards. Um, this guy is a repeatable, you know, will sink in a sense, especially since we can use um, Grand Cross to kind of help with that. We are going to see the judgment of the Magna here. The problem becomes anything that we bring into play here, any stranger we grab is going to come into play tapped, which is not great. Even something like Undine wouldn't be super great here. Um, you know, the idea would be that you could use Undine to try to put his regalia back in his hand, um, uh, his regalia back in his hand, and maybe the road. That doesn't really do much. Um, but it would be some, an option just to kind of reset. But we also plan on, pretty much plan on using the God Art of um, Magna here. We pretty much have to. So we want to destroy those Regalia rather than prevent him from being, you know, rather than allow him to recast them and get advantageous triggers. If Paul had been in a position at this point where he didn't have any blue will available from his stones, then I actually think Undine would have been a really good play here. You put the two Regalia back in his hand, um, and then you can wait until his turn, um, and then in the upkeep of his turn, cast, uh, use the God Art of Magna to then immediately kill the Faria and make it so that Paul can't play anything for the rest of that turn. Sure, Paul gets to swing in with Hino Kanasuchi, swings in for 20, that's fine. Um, we, we still survive that. Um, we've removed him from being able to have access to God Art, uh, and then Magda can just kind of serve as this 2020 beat stick. Because um, he would definitely be losing more cards than we would. Um, and he's certainly not going to swing the Hino Kanasuchi just randomly into an Undine. So it kind of becomes a back and forth tie. Um, but ultimately... Uh, because he has that blue will available, he'd be able to use the god art of Faria in response to give her eternal, which essentially mitigates the entire point of using the god art to kill Faria anyway. Paul choosing to do nothing during recovery here, recovering into both of these stacks, having access to a lot of will. Down comes that Percival, as we saw before. Bounced to the top of the deck with his twin swords. Trying to see if we wait to do the God Art now or later. The problem is the body on the Hinokutsuchi. Um, like a 2020 is very, very large. Sure, we have one too, um, but 
that means they trade, which is not great. So in response to the um, the scry, we're going to go ahead and see if we maybe see a bigger card here. Something that might be more important with the, you know, trying to gain a thousand life. And then choosing to allow the Percival to resolve. Seeing another Grand Cross there. It's just a really, really good card for Paul to be able to grab at this point. Especially with all the re the strangers that he's been able to bring into hand. I mean, if a single one of them is Loki, um, that puts him into a really great position to be able to instant speed, get rid of all the resonators. Um, sure, it hits his side of the field as well, but when you're trying to kill your opponent with Faria, it doesn't really matter. Paul kind of deciding what he wants to do here. Preemptively using Aura of the Sacred Sword to draw himself a card and give all of his entities barrier for the turn. Swinging in first with the Hino. What we're going to do here is we're going to block the Hino with the, with the Magna. And then in response to like him not doing anything in response to the Magna, so like before damage calculation, using Magna's God Art to clear everything and stop Paul from being able to play anything for the rest of the turn. The problem is here, he's going to be able to do God Art in response, which means that he gets to keep his Faria. Faria go up, goes up to being a 14-14, gets to live. We don't kill strangers. Um, so he gets to keep the Twin Swords, he gets to keep the Hino, he gets to keep the Faria, and I, he loses all those Regalia and the Road and everything else, I have to lose three Regalia. And then, um, Magna and Hino are gonna trade. So, this is a God Art that's played defensively and still isn't that great, <laughs> but at this point in time we kind of had to do it. Um, there is an argument to be made about trying to do like taking the 20 going down to 18 doing god art in response to the declaration of attack from faria he chooses to use the eternal um but is still going to lose flying and then magna can block faria so like magna doesn't die there faria doesn't die there either but he keeps the hino but then we still have to answer the Hino later, um, and that becomes a problem too because the the Faria deck or the Magna deck does not really have a lot of good removal. Um, it's playing as a combo deck, um, having a big you know way to get rid of that Hino just really isn't it. Um, and so we kind of have to admit the fact that we're going to be losing our Magna here just to stop ourselves from dying to that twenty twenty in two turns. And he still gets a, another um, stranger to hand as a result when we know that he's been sitting on, probably hasn't seen a Loki yet, uh, and he still has a Grand Cross in hand for sure. Does get to swing in here for 14, take me down to 24. Twin Swords can also swing me down here. Um, does get Drain as well, so it makes his life total even more out of reach. And then Twin Swords gets to swing in, takes us down to 18. And then at that point in time, we kind of reset the board, but we're still stealing with Afaria. And we don't really have a way to get it off the board at this point. You see, we have Final Stance there. We have Schrodinger. We don't have Undine. We have Will of the Wisp, which is nice to be able to block the Faria, provided he doesn't get another Wings of the Archangel. Um, and so we're going to have to just kind of dig a little bit here with Sagusa, try to see. Um, the game plan here essentially is to hope that we can survive long enough to set up for infinite turns. Um, and say, like, okay, we cleared the board. Well, if we can get to infinite turns, we make it. We win. Um 
It's still not looking great. Guinevere comes down here, just tries to dig us down a little bit deeper. Like I said, you see we have um, the Yggdrasil's uncastable now, because even if we pay for it, it's not going to have a regalia to be able to go get us. Um, we have the final stance, we have the Schrodinger, we have a different stance. We just need to find an Undine at this point. Wings of the Arc, uh, Awakening of the Winged Lord here coming down. We don't have a magic stance to stop it. Wings of the Archangel coming in here immediately sets Faria up to be flying, which is really, really bad. <laughs> An awakening Sacred Wave Blade here to kill the Guinevere. He says, you know what? You're not going to get to draw cards. I don't want you to. Uh, I'm at an advantage right now. Your hand is clearly scrambling. We will get rid of the Guinevere. In response, we'll go ahead and flash in Will of the Wisp here just to try to draw a card. Once again, see if we can get into the defense stance. Doesn't happen. <coughs> so Paul gets another stranger into hand of the three that are left, pretty much cementing that he has a Loki in hand at this point, um, and gets the Guinevere out of the way. So this is pretty much lethal um, if Paul has a Loki. We know he has the Grand Cross, so he could just use Grand uh, Swing with Twin Swords um, to... Or no, it wouldn't be completely lethal. Faria is only currently 1,000 damage. So it, it puts it in a position of you swing with Twin Swords. I can't block it. Um, after the Twin Swords is done, you use Grand Cross. You force me to uh, RFG all Resonators I control. Uh, Faria swings it for 1,000. I go down to 2. Uh, and at that point in time, you know, you're pretty much safe wherever, especially um, there's there's really nothing. That, I mean, this deck has zero life gain o outside of me being able to pull off the infinite next turn. Um, we'd be pretty out of luck. Defense stands here coming down to stop that uh, Faria trigger or sorry, coming down to stop that regalia um, saying, no, you can only be a 10 10. You have to take two turns here with this Faria. Um, this does get us a stance in play, which again sets us up nicely for being able to do the infinite turns. Um, we just have to get to it. We need the Undine to be able to make it happen. Um, we'll take the 10 from the Faria. Move to recovery here. Ishtar, we're like, hey, what's in our graveyard that we could maybe make use of? Was Ishtar or nothing? Okay, great. Um, so that's pretty much a dead draw here. Not the stranger we wanted to see. Paul only having access to one will, so we get in terms of one blue. So if we can get through a grand cross, we feel pretty comfortable. We have our own grand cross as well, which is nice. You see, like I said, we have that Schrodinger here. Will of the Wisp going ahead and flashing back to our hand and then using Genesis to recast it, try to dig us into maybe something a little bit deeper. Gets us a behemoth. Doesn't really do much there. Knowing that we're in a spot where we kind of need to stall for time, eyeing that um, eyeing that uh, final stance, playing the Yggdrasil here. Paul choosing to flash in, kind of taking the advantage of the knowledge that Paul maybe doesn't know how many Regali we play, gets him to spend the blue. And so at that point, we're going to go ahead and use the final stance. There is definitely still a route to doing infinite turns here now that we know that he doesn't have any form of blue for Grand Cross Reincarnation, and we know he doesn't have a blue wizard anymore. Um, so really taking a chance here, but having a potential option to, to start going infinite if we can hit the... Um, if we can see Undine somewhere. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and use a Dark Alice's smile here. Sees that there is no Grand Cross. 
trying to decide what even matters here. We can hit any card in his hand. Uh, we choose to... We know that he can't cast that if I take another turn. He can't cast that if I take another turn. Can't cast that. So we are... Um, the Intimidation would be ultimately choosing to have the Intimidation be what we grab there, which feels unimportant. Uh, I don't really know why we decided to grab that. Um, I felt like maybe the Loki would have been the better play. Down comes Azazel. I think the play line here is to try to set up some kind of shenanigans where we can kill um, getting rid of the intimidation here is to try to set up some kind of shenanigans with the Azazel where we can kill the uh, Faria this turn, put us on a better clock. We're going to swing Togusa into the Faria. He's going to block with his blue wizard, and we say, that's fine. Great. He takes 200 because of his Azazel trigger. Paul, once again, being a great sport here. In comes Behemoth. If we had had a Behemoth in Grave, this would have been great. We could have played the... Um, we could have played Ishtar to grab the Behemoth to then uh, have two 10-10 attack... You know, things that are greater than 10 attackers to kill the Faria. Um, so we hit the... Uh, wings of the Archangel here. Swing in at the Faria. He blocks with the Twin Swords. We don't have a way to remove it. Behemoth forces me to RFG something, so does flash in the... Um, does hit the final stance. If we'd had a little bit more will here, there's a world where we try to... Um, or if we had paid for it differently... If we had a Guinevere of some, still had Guinevere, we could have tried to take a second extra turn here, um, which would have been really great. That would have put us in a position where we'd probably come back here. Ultimately, though, not having anything to be able to follow up with, um, knowing that we do have blockers for the Faria is nice. The problem is he, you know, the, in that barrier, um, but uh, he does still have that Loki we got to deal with. Um, there's an unknown in his hand. Saying, okay, we got Grand Cross. We're still playing this game. We got blockers to be able to deal, to keep ourselves alive. Um, Blue Wizard by itself can't kill us. Uh, he can't get through. Um, he can't get through the Will of the Wisp with that removal spell. Does have the Percival, and we don't have any kind of cancel for it. We're going to try to use Blue Wizard. Um, ultimately, knowing that he has the Blue Wizard as well. And at this point, we're pretty much just banking on there being no um no grand cross reincarnation in that top card in those top cards but unfortunately that last card off the top is a grand cross reincarnation which will allow him to use the loki effect to remove all of the resonators from both sides of the board and swing through with the Faria for lethal. So that is the match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. These lists were a ton of fun. We will be sure to have the deck list for both up by this weekend. Check them out, play them yourselves. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying class dismissed.